So today we will be doing the topic of addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. So we would have done this in parts before. We learned how to work out fractions, regular rules of working out fractions, proper, improper, mixed fractions. And then we would have learned the rules of adding and subtracting algebraic terms which is we can only add or subtract like variables. So variables that are exactly the same, right? So we add or subtract the coefficients and we place the variable back with our answer. We do not change the power or the, um, the format of the variable. So let's get into this example of a blend. The first rule is to find the LCM just like regular fractions, right? So the LCM between 3, 5, and 10, we can say 3 by 5 is 15, but 10, 10 can't go into 15. So 3 by 10, we can try 30. And we always try to find the lowest common multiple, right? Lowest being the keyword. Now, what we would usually do is say three into 30 is 10 and we multiply that 10 by the numerator of the fraction. So this is going to be 10 multiplied by X, right? Just writing in the basic steps. And five into 30 is six. So this is going to be six multiplied by X. Add 10 into 30 is three. So this is going to be three multiplied by X. From us knowing how to multiply, variables, this would give us 10x plus 6x plus 3x all over 30. And we know that they are like terms, so we could sum them up, which will give us 19x over 30. This could also look like this, 19 over 30 with an x at the side, not at the bottom. Our second example, instead of the variables being in the numerator, we now have the variables in the denominator. So again, same steps follow, we find the LCM. Now this one is not going to be as straightforward as the first one because we now have to find the LCM between letters and variables. So what we could do is do them in parts. What is the LCM of one, three, and four? Because we know that the coefficients of that X will be one, right? So one, three, and four. We know if it were regular numbers, we would put 12. And now we just take the largest of the variables. So that would check all of them are X, so it's just going to be X. And we do the same thing. We say X into 12 X. So not everybody could see that in their head. So we come across here and we divide it. How many times can X go into 12 X? From our rules, this will be 12, right? Which we did already. So now we come and say 12 by three. Now we're going to say three X into 12 X. Come to the side and work it out if you're not comfortable as yet as doing this in your head. The X's cancel out, which will give us four. So plus four by four. Minus 12 X over four X. X's cancel out, which will give us three. So three by five, because our negative sign is incorporated here. So we just put three by positive five. Let's work that out. That will give us 36 plus 16 minus 15 all over 12 X. We can work this out, which will give us 252 minus 15, so 16 plus 36 minus 15, 37 over 12x. And we can leave that as our answer. We do not need to change it to, an, to a mixed number. We can leave it in this format. So in this case, we realize that the X is at the bottom because it was already in the numerator.
So we distributed. We found the LCM, which is 15. We follow the same rules, five and 15 is three. Now it is very important for us to put brackets here. Very, very important because if you just put this sample, so we'll just multiply the three by eight alone, but it's three by the entire thing, five by the entire thing. We distribute it out and simplify, and this will be our final answer. So if we watch the format at the side, we'll see that two by x plus three over five can be written as two over five by x plus three. Five by y minus two over seven can be written as five over seven by y minus two. So we are doing this question and we're following the fractions format. So one over nine could be written as five minus x over nine, right? If we want to put the brackets like this, one. But the one isn't necessary, right? And if the one isn't necessary, brackets isn't necessary, but it's fine if you put the brackets. So minus four plus nine X over six again, because one is in the numerator, we don't need to put the one because it's understood. If it was a two and a three, then it would look like this. Three by that, two by that, but it is not right. So we don't need to put it in. And then we do our working like usual. Nine by six is 54. Nine into 54 is six. So we do six by five minus X minus six into 54 is nine by four plus nine X. We simplify our stuff. That would give us 30 minus six X minus 36 minus 81 X all over 54. A lot of times persons forget to put back the numerator. Let's add up our like terms. 30 minus 36, that's negative six. Negative six X minus 81, that's minus 81 X all over 54. If you want to put the X in front, 81 X minus six all over 54. But what happened here is we did not use the lowest common multiple because we could have used 18, right? We could have used 18. So if you want to see how to simplify this, we go back to the stuff where we had the two, we break them up into two different, 81 X over 54. That's going to be minus six over 54 as we just, worked out and let's simplify this. What numbers, what number that could go into 54 and 81, 18, I believe. Oh, nine, so. So because we went with the highest common multiple, um, is it wrong? It's, it's not wrong, but it's not simplified. You wouldn't get it wrong. You would not get it wrong for sure. But it just, it just, I don't know if they will take out a half a mark because it's not simplified to the lowest, right? But we're going so to make sure this is Again, see if I can do it as 80, with 80. Yes, yeah, so to be simplified answer will give us, uh, Right, so we made an error here, so we changed it. It's actually negative 87, so that'll be negative 87 X. And if we simplify this, we say we can find common terms. So negative 87 divided by three is negative 29 X over 54 divided by three is 18, which is back to our original LCM that we should have used. And that will be two over 18. So if we join them back as a single fraction, it's going to be negative 29x minus two over 18. Right, so it's not hard to separate and simplify and go back together, right? I don't want you to risk it and leave your answer like this. So always try to use your LCM. 
Yes, Mr. Agat, uh, minus 2 minus 29x over 18. Nice. Today we will be doing the topic of factorizing, introducing the topic and seeing um, how far we can get. So when we think about factorization or factoring or factorizing, one word comes to mind, which is factor, right? And we would have been introduced to the term factors before. A factor is a number that could go into another number without leaving a remainder. So for example, Two is a factor of four. Two is a factor of six. Two is a factor of eight, etc. right? Now, in an algebraic setting, we are going to find factors of different terms. So factors of algebraic terms. So we have a question here. <laughs> That is 8PQ plus 16PR plus 24PS. Now we are seeing that they are unlike terms. We can't add them because one variable is PQ, another is PR, another is PS. But for the numbers, we define a factor. So again, a factor is a number that could go into other numbers without a remainder. So between 8, 16, and 24, what we want to do is find the highest common factor. And between 8, 16, and 24, the highest number that we know could go into all these numbers is 8. 8 can go into 8, 8 can go into 16, 8 can go into 24. So let me rewrite this. So we take out 8. So we are going to separate our factors and we're going to put it in a distributive form, right? So 8. Now, we have, what we're going to do is deal with each, each term of the variable individually. So we have a P, we have a, another P, and we have another P. So of course, the highest common factor of P is P. So we take out the P. Now we have a Q, we have a R, and we have an S. But if we pay attention, a factor is a number or a factor is something that has to go into every term. So there was a number that could be the, a factor for all three, which is eight, eight into eight, eight into 16, eight into 24. There was a P in each term, P, P and P, so we could factor out the P. However, Q is just in one, R is just in one, S is just in one. So we cannot factor out Q nor P, um, Q, no R, no S, because the highest factors must be in each term. So AP is the HCF of our three variable terms above. So now that we have finished taking out our factors, again, we're going to put it in a distributive form. For us to understand how to put this back in a distributive form, we are not changing our answer. We are simply putting it in a different form. So when I multiply back out my, the stuff that I'm going to put here, I must get back 18 PQ, 16 PR, 24 PS. So what I'm going to say is divide it to get my answer. So I'm going to say 18 PQ divided by 8 P, that will give me Q. So I know that Q is my first term in my brackets. So when I multiply 18p, sorry, 8p by q, I'll get 8pq. I'm going to do that for the other two. I'm going to say 16pr. So now we're taking these terms and dividing by the hcf. 8p, I'm going to get 2r. 8 into 8 is 1, 8 into 16 is 2, P and P cancel, R remain at the top. So that's going to give me positive 2R. And I'm going to do for the last one, 24 PS over 8P again, which will give me 3S. And I put plus 3S. 
just to make sure my answer is correct, I'm going to multiply it back out. 8P by Q is 8PQ, correct? 8P by 2R is 16PR, correct? And 8P by 3 is 24, sorry, 3S, because it was a 3S, right? 8P by 3S, 8 by 3 is 24, P by S is PS, so positive 24 PS, correct. So we would have realized that we factored out the correct terms and placed the correct terms back into the distributive bracket form. So number two we did, we found the highest common factor between 5, 15, and 20, which is 5. And then between WP, WQ, and WR, W is our common factor, so we take our W. We divide 5WP by 5W to get P, 15WQ by 5W to get 3Q, and negative 20 uh, WR by 5W to get negative 4R. So let's try this one here. We have 49 S T cubed minus 14 ST squared. So now we're seeing some powers and we're like, what? Right, so take our time with this step. What's the highest factor between 49 and 14? That is seven. And now we go with the S and the S, right? So both of them are S, so we can just take out the S. We know that. And they both have T's. So what we have to do is we're taking out the smallest of the two. 